You're watching Public Affairs. Berkowitz is my name, and politics is our game. And we will be doing lots of politics and public policy this evening because we have as our guest Charles, Charles Thomas. He is the former political editor at ABC7. He was at that station for almost a quarter of a century. And how much time were you spending there doing, focusing just on politics, the last eight, 10 Probably years? Probably the last eight, 10 years, yes. All right. He sort of, well, it was about the same, same time you came in a little bit when Obama was a U.S. Senator, You right? know, my first full day on the job corresponded with Barack Obama's first full day on the job as really? president, myself as, as political as, reporter. As president, when he was first president in 2008, that was your first day, full day, time job? First job? full day, because uh, Andy Shaw, who was my predecessor at ABC7, his last day on the job was Barack Obama's inauguration. And I took over, you know, for, from him, uh, although I had been covering politics. And prior you are to a that. fan of Barack Obama. You think Barack oh, was think like Barack the best, you know, the best you, president we ever had, right? If you think that it, it, Barack Obama's legacy, people say Affordable Care Act, they talk about other issues. Barack Obama's legacy will be as the first black president of the United States, the first person of color to hold that office. That's how he'll be remembered 100 years from now. Is that good? I think that's his think he'll be that's proud. proud. He'll be proud to say what he accomplished was he was the first that's what he African was. American. And he that's was a quite an accomplishment in a society such as this. Okay. So you're now at VON. You've been there for six months. Yeah. You were with Maze Jackson. Maze Jackson. I co-host the morning program between 6 and 9 o'clock in the morning. There's been a bit of controversy because when he came in, he was the co-host with Matt McGill, who'd been there right. for 13 years. Right. And then Matt proceeded to quit right away. He said, yes. I'm not buying this at all. No, I think he didn't. He, he felt, I don't think he wanted to do it anymore. I don't know if that's because Mays started doing it a few days yeah, earlier. But well, whatever. But yeah. I got a call from Melody Spann Cooper, who is the president at Midway Broadcasting Corporation. She said, hey, can you come over and help out? I've got a new host. The guy really doesn't have a lot of experience. Can you come there and sort of sit with him? And since so you, you're you know, sitting I'm a 45 year veteran, I'm sitting yeah. there with Mays. Yeah. My goodness, people start paying attention. And in a couple of weeks, Melody says, hey, can you stay and do this? You guys are catching fire this quickly. And so when do people, if they're watching this show and they want to know how they can find Charles Thomas and Maze Jackson, where do they find you? They find it on the AM dial at 1690. That's way over on the edge. Or they can uh, subscribe to iHeartRadio. Or they can go to the WVON way, um, website and we stream the program stream. live onto the your, website. Your drive, your morning drive, right? Morning Six drive, yes. That's the key stuff. That's when people really tune in. Now, are the ratings going up? Because oh. some people were saying your ratings before you got there were too low. They were horrible. They were horrible. They, they were like, uh, in fact, WVON, or what do they call it could it? be said that WVON was dying. And we, oh. I think I read, they told us that we had one half of 1% of the black audience. Not that we have to wait a second, keep in mind the, of, of, the of the black, black audience. audience. Right. Oh, and wait. by four months later, we had 5% of the black audience. Where? In other words, that was a tenfold increase. You know the word, who, 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 who is the black audience listening to? VON is the voice of the Negro, right? Yeah, but they were, but I guess they weren't really voicing the Negro properly or something because when Mays and I started together, now you're, now you're doing we it. really, the, the audience exploded okay. because we started talking politics. Now keep in mind that Mays Jackson and I used to do uh, what they called intellectual radio, which is basically podcasting on the, in the west suburbs. We would be in Broadview in a garage. It was like Wayne's when, World. When was this? This was the last couple of years. Oh, you I were doing this while you were at, at ABC? Well, while I was doing it at Part ABC. Part-time, you were like moonlighting? No, I was moonlighting, and they didn't quite really like it at <laughs> you didn't ABC. You didn't like it too much. Right? Yeah, because we started You were there. doing all sorts of bad stuff? Right. Well, we, were doing, we weren't using any foul language or anything no. like that, but we were talking about politics in an in-depth way, ways that I certainly couldn't talk about it on Channel 7. Like and what? We what were you saying? What we, were, were you saying? we were talking about 
politics in Chicago and Illinois from a black perspective. Yeah. Come on, we give were me talking the, give about me the it. Nitty gritty. How you're, does you're it holding affect? back here. You're huh? holding back. You're holding back. Tell us what no, you no. were doing. What we were doing, we were talking about, okay, one thing yeah. we did, we talked about politics as they affect, we compared politics as they affect black people in Chicago and Illinois as being on a plantation where Mike Madigan was the master and he had these black overseers that kept all the darkies in line. Who are those black overseers? Name, you know, the name, black name, politicians. Name, name, name. The black politicians, the black caucus. Was Christian, Christian Mitchell, is he a... Is he's he, one of them now. Yeah, he's a state he's rep. One of them now. He's a state rep. He's so down, he's, a, he's a black he's, overseer on he, a plantation, he, on Mike's he plantation. He is one of the people that serve Mike Madigan yeah. and not the black community. All, yeah. They're all like that. They're all like that. Have they, you told Christian They serve that? the Have party. You told Christian that? Absolutely, to his face. What does he say? What? what People he disagree, but that's all right. I'm a commentator now. Yeah. I can say what I want to say, <laughs> and he can believe what he wants to say, but yeah. he has to face the voters. He has to face the voters, and when he toes the line of the party and not represents the people, then he'll have a problem. Well, wait a second. You take I'm other people who are more invested in the system than him, might be uh, Kimberly Lightford, who is the state senator from the west suburbs and west side, who is the chairperson of the Legislative Black Caucus. She won't even come on our show right, because, because- She doesn't want to get on the bad side no, of Speaker Mike. Exactly. She knows that exactly. she's on the right side of Speaker exactly. Mike, she's taken care yes. of. Yes. Now Christian actually does get, he's been challenged in primaries because he takes on the unions but he, and but, charter schools, but right? But he, in, in, uh, in years, the last, after the last election, He's more in line with towing the party line than See, he, he has didn't like that. He past. didn't like that primary challenge. So a lot much. of guys, a lot of guys are like that. They go to Springfield and they talk about how independent they're going to be. And then take your take your guy on the north side who took. Not my uh, guy. I don't no, have guys. Okay, you okay. Got guys. The guy on the uh, north side, uh, Gazzardi. Oh, he Will Gazzardi. Will Gazzardi. He replaced uh, what was her name? G Berrios. Uh, yeah. Berrios's daughter, daughter in, yeah. in the state house. Man, he was going to go down there and be the progressive voice of. He's he's Chicago. not. He's not. He's still there, but he's voting for for Mike Madigan to be the speaker, just like Chris. Well, well, everybody voting. does that, exactly. except for that guy up in Highland Park. Exactly, you know? yeah. except Drury. But I mean, yeah. exactly. But these guys, they told the line when they get there. They talk a lot of stuff to be elected, let's but then they told to the, the line. Let's when get they get to there. let's get to serious stuff. Yeah, because there's a governor's race. There's a Democratic primary. It's only four months away. Yes. Who do you like in that race? You who like do I JB? like in that race? No, who do you like to win? I'm not saying who you who like. Who do I like to win? Who I do think do it's going to come down to Chris Kennedy and JB. And personally, I think Chris Kennedy will run better downstate than JB will. Um, I because think why? Because his name. They still I Kennedy think you take places yeah. like Decatur, Champaign, yeah. Peoria, a lot of Democrats down yeah. there. Yeah. They're going to hear the Kennedy name, they're gonna remember Camelot, they're gonna go to the Kennedy thing, and I think he's got a really good shot to roll up some numbers in the Democratic primary to counter what JB might be able to do with his big spending in Cook County and uh, Northern Illinois. So Ohio. you're saying JB piles up a margin in Cook County. And in Rockford. And, and upstate, in, and, and 70 and percent of the Democratic vote, I think, in the primary is probably upstate, right? And Cook 30 County, percent yeah. yeah. But 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 keep in mind. So he's got uh, Kennedy's got to get a big big margin. Kennedy's gonna, Kennedy's going to do Kennedy. I think he can do well in Cook County in Chicago. Really? He can do well because he's got the name. I mean, the Kennedy name resonates, particularly among older black voters. It resonates. People remember uh, the good old days. And of why the were they? Why the black people? The black people mm -hmm. remember the Kennedys well. Why did they remember them well? What did what did either RFK, Chris Kennedy's dad, what did he do for black people, or what did JFK do? Well, I think there's I I you know certainly they set a tone. They it set did. a tone, and they, they were cautious, they, they were right you know. there on the ground. I mean, keep in mind that John Kennedy was assassinated, Robert Kennedy was assassinated. Malcolm X was assassinated. Martin Luther King was assassinated. Medgar Evers was assassinated. It was a There's tough a, time. It was yeah. a tough time, and there was a common okay. um, bond between those people as terms of being civil rights um, champions, if you will. At least the perception is that 
in the black community. And I think that in, among a lot of older black voters, I think that will resonate. I don't think that JB is going to necessarily buy, buy away that bond. Okay, so in, not in terms of who you like personally, but you're saying, in your view, Chris Kennedy's got a good shot. Of a winning good the whole shot. Thing. I think it's going to be a really close really race tight, between those tight two. Race between those two. Yeah. Now, but you know, the recent polls showed JB ahead something like thirty-four percent to I don't fifteen. Know. I don't know. I don't. I haven't seen any polls. You're doing it based on your. But gut. you got to keep in mind too that in 2010, remember Pat Quinn had like a 38-point lead. On the, I think it was Dan Hines uh, it, it, about this time uh -huh. in that race, and by the time that race it ended, narrowed. it, it narrowed. was five points. Right. So Democratic voters are not paying attention to this right now. They can do all the polls they want. They aren't going to pay attention until January, middle Clear. January. They've got the what we call the winter freeze. <laughs> and um, well, what is uh, what is coming your, up? What does your your buddy, your co-host, Mays Jackson, say? What does he say? What's his view about the black people? What is the one question he says black oh, people? Oh, he has like? he has a phrase. He says, "What's in it for the black people?" This is what everyone who comes onto our broadcast is required to ask. I don't care if you're black or white or Latino or whatever. You've got to answer that question. You've got to answer that question. What's in it for the black was people? JB, with was JB was JB on the show? He was on the show. And what did he say? Well, JB. What's in it for the black people if they elect JB? Well, he's saying that he'll be a fighter against Donald Trump. He says that he How will, does Donald he Trump will, figure in here? You know, he, you know they, he may, they make all the talking. I know, but what, if I I'm have a black no idea, guy, why do I care about I have, Donald Trump? I have no idea. Okay. That's what That's they what he say. said, though. Okay. That's what they say. Okay. But he also, it, very interestingly, he came onto the show. Uh, it was a few days after he had been endorsed by the Chicago Building Trades Council, the trade unions, right. the carpenters, plumbers. Yeah, Madigan, Madigan, Madigan's oh, listen, behind Listen, let him. me talk to oh, you, go ahead. Okay, okay. I'm being interviewed, not you. <laughs> okay, so he comes on right. and he he says that, hey, and by the way, I was just uh, endorsed last week by the Building Trades Council. Yeah. I looked at the guy and said, well, you know, the Building Trades Council, the guys that work on the construction site, they don't hire black people. What's up with that, JB? We don't care about that. <laughs> We don't think that's such a great thing that you've got these people that a lot of black people think are racist endorsing you. Man, he didn't know what to do. He <laughs> should, <laughs> you should have seen his guy He's on like, the side. Oh my He's going, gosh, like, oh, oh my God. Gosh. Gosh. We didn't think about that in our talking points. They, then, were, saying, they were saying, cut, cut. Okay, the show now, is over. Now, Get Chris this guy Kennedy off comes in, yeah, okay. and he's talking about what a great guy he is. And we asked him, we said, well, you know, I saw you at that Wolf Point project, that big skyscraper you built down on the river. You didn't have any black people working on that. Well, what do you, well, <laughs> you know, hey, it what's in it for the black people? Yeah. We want some serious answers. And these are questions that are only going to be asked by a black media source. Tribune, they're not asking that they stuff. Rarely, like that. They don't have any black people there? Where? At the Tribune no, editorial I'm not, board? No, I'm saying they're not asking those kinds of questions of these candidates. Okay. What are you going to do about that? That is impolite of you. Hmm? That is impolite Exactly. Of you. They don't you, like that. But this is what I know I can do now at WBON that I could not do at ABC7. Who told you not to do it when it you was, were there? It wasn't anybody having to tell me that. It's just that How at ABC7, you know? listen, at ABC7, I had a responsibility to a mass audience. Yeah. It wasn't just a black audience. Oh, I see. Now at WBON, I can focus. I can go into the weeds on some of these issues that affect the black community, and that's what I've always wanted to do. And that's why I left ABC7, because I wanted to spend the balance of my career doing that. And I tell you, it has been just so gratifying. I am so happy I did it. Yeah, well, because is it that you can speak more freely now at VON? Because you're you're a host, co-host. You're not a straight well, reporter. Or is it because of the audience being large? It's part because black, of the audience. You wanted to, you wanted to focus more on the black audience yes. because you identify with. Yes. It? Yes. I'm black. Come on, man. What do I look like? You know, I can't. You know. Yeah, but I don't. I see. Yeah. I don't think that way. Well, I don't, well you I, don't think that way, I would, but I, I do. I, but if I were there at VON, I'd be asking these questions. I'm a white guy, but I'd no, be asking you, these if questions. No, if you were at WVON, but you're not. But and, if I were at ABC, I would ask those questions. But you wouldn't get them on the air, dog. You've got to figure that. Really? Got, no, because They're gonna you've got, me? look, man, so you've got to 
go for the mass audience. You have to deal with who is Channel 7's audience. It's not just a black audience. It's an Asian audience, a Latino yeah. audience, a white audience, every other kind of audience. You had to go to the middle. You can't go to one particular uh, program, well, do you your reporting based on what you think. That wouldn't be Charles, fair. Charles, you can if you have... If you've got a pair, you understand what I mean? You got Jeff, a pair? Jeff, I've done this for 45 years, and I've done it in mainstream media. You cannot. Were they going to fire you? Well, you can't do it effectively. You can't be a good reporter and always go to your piles and talk about okay. what's happening in your world and, and forget everybody else's. You can't do that. Well, okay. So we, we covered JB. We covered Chris Kennedy. I guess you're saying Daniel Biss doesn't have a shot. So No, I haven't said that. Did you, did in, you in have fact, Daniel let me on tell you your show? Let me did tell you, you something. Have, yeah? We had Daniel on our show, and guess what? How'd that go? Went really well. We had a lot of people calling off, yeah. calling up. In fact, their line was, "I'm with him. I'm pissed off." <laughs> off. That's, That's what good. they would say in their little Facebook uh, they, comments. They, the blacks like Daniel Biss. They're, I'm not. I can't make a generalization like that. I'm saying that Daniel Biss came across very well when he was on our broadcast. What did, what did he say? So, uh, pardon? What did he say to come across well? Give us a I don't summary. know. They just like they the just guy. Like I can't say. I mean, there yeah. were part, parts of JB's uh, conversation that I'm sure people liked, and parts of Chris Kennedy's, and parts of Teal Hardeman, and parts, I think uh, parts, parts, parts of all but of Daniel, them. Daniel, they liked a lot in general, is what you're saying. I mean, they liked Daniel more I'm than JB. That we than focused on issues affecting the black I community. I understand. Okay. And Daniel Biss, I'm saying he did as well. As anybody else did, it's a it's oh, a wide okay. open race. Okay. okay. What about the Republican side with uh, Mr. Rauner? Has Mr. Been, Rauner has, has he been, been on your show twice. Uh, he's and been on our show done? twice. How's he done? Uh, he had some issues because uh, we were asking him about contracting, estate contracts, and who's how many millionaires have you made, Bruce Rauner, since you've been governor with state contracting? I'm black millionaires. He couldn't answer. He would always answer. You got to call the Black Chamber of Commerce. In fact, we, we have sort of a thing where we'll play him back every now and then and say, call the Black Chamber of Commerce. And, and <laughs> this was kind of his stock answer. It, he had no numbers is what you're telling yeah, me. Yeah, but check it out. But I tell you, something that Bruce Rauner is talking about yeah. that's really catching fire yeah. with black voters, and that's the whole property tax bill. In the south suburbs right now, you have a crisis among black homeowners who have moved to the south suburbs, places like South Holland, Riverdale, uh, Homewood, uh, Flossmoor. A lot of blacks moving out there. Middle class blacks. Middle class They blacks. moved out there in the 90s and early parts of this millennium. Right. The neighborhood suddenly began to resegregate. Resegregate and becoming? As in becoming all black all again. All black, okay. Yeah. yeah. And, but beyond that, property values began to decline. Why? Well, part of the reason is that the property taxes have been going up. That'll lower, your, prop that'll lower your property value. Right. So not only is it lowering, lowering your property value, you've got some situations in communities such as Flossmoor where people are paying more now, black people paying more now for the principal and interest on their mortgages. That they're paying more in taxes than the principal and interest on their um, mortgages. Why, why are those taxes going up, Charles? Why? Yeah, why? Well, the quick excuse is that they're going up because of schools, because property taxes pay for schools in Illinois. But here's another reason. Yeah. Township government, yeah. very prominent in the south suburbs. It is, yeah. A guy named Frank Zuccarelli, Good who was the Frank. most heavily weighted Democratic committee man in Cook County, in the state, heavily weighted. Why is he so heavily weighted? Because he's got so many Democratic voters. Because black people, 90% vote Democrat. Oh, I see. So he gets the weight. This guy has a town. He's also the Thornton Township supervisor. Hmm? Big Madigan guy, what's too, his, right? What's his salary as a supervisor? I, I can not tell you. But good he's you good got a salary. Yeah. And he's, well, guess what else he's getting? What does he get? Oh, he will get pension. That's good. He's got other people working in the township who get big salaries. They get pensions. He's got well, patronage. On your. On your Thornton Township uh, tax bill, if you live in Harvey, for instance, you got a line on there that says, oh, Thornton Township, I owe them <laughs> too, right? Yes. So, I mean, they've got stuff loaded onto their uh, tax bills too that, that, that aside from schools, which they are struggling to keep up, but it, 
they, they have a really bad situation out there. And when Rauner says property tax freeze, black ears it resonates. pop up. It resonates. And I'm telling you, on, on our program, we've been making this a cause celebre, what's happening to black homeowners in the south suburbs and the western suburbs where black people are moving, uh, by the way. So, and, and they are, they are uh, it's resonating. So I don't know if he's going to be able can to con he, can he get, convert can that. Can Rauner get, well, in the primary, these Democrats are going to vote Democratic. Yeah, they're, they're going to stay, vote they're the gonna stay home in the primary. But in the general, well, they're going to stay home. They're, they don't like anybody. They're going to stay home as in the party. Oh, they're staying in the party. And they probably would go, if they're concerned about property taxes, they would go more for Chris Kennedy because he's been the one attacking the way property taxes are set and increased. And he says, Mike Madigan has got a conflict. He should either do one or the other, get out of his law firm or stop being a speaker. Right. So Kennedy's got his target right on Madigan. And that's one reason why Madigan is taking care of J.B. Pritzker and Pritzker's not saying people well, about Madigan this, right? Is Madigan really taking care of J.B. Pritzker or is J.B. Oh. Pritzker taking care of Madigan? Well, they're both, they're both. It's, it's, I got a theory It's symbiotic, it. isn't it? I mean, J.B. gives the money JB, to the unions. J.B. is spending a lot him. of money. Yeah. He's spending a lot of money right now. And the, the money that we see him spending is on television. Yeah. But he's also spending money to organize those downstate counties, 102 okay. counties all over yeah. the state. He's getting, he, he's buying off committee men. He's, he's doing what he has to do. He's building his own party. He's building his own party, building a network, an infrastructure for a campaign all downstate. Now check this out. Okay. What if Kip, Chris Kennedy runs? He say, he, on our show, he says, I'm doing a rope-a-dope. I said, Ali, I'm not getting, you know, I'm not, not going to do much. What if he wins that? What if he wins that primary? Sneaks through and wins that primary. Chris Kennedy. Yeah. What if he's going to have all that infrastructure? Oh, he can just step in and he take. He can take it from JB. Take it over. Yeah, it's you self-set. Know, you know, Jeff, you've been around politics long enough to know. Every cycle, every cycle in this state, there's a sucker. And he's usually worth a few hundred million dollars. Go J back to Andy JB is, McKenna. JB's the sucker. Go back to Andy McKenna. He could be. Yeah. Go back to Andy McKenna. Go yeah. back to, remember Al Holfield ran for U.S. and these had a lot of money? They're pigeons to they're be fleeced. They're Blair. Pigeon, these are all wealthy pigeons to yeah, be fleeced, right? Yeah, Blair Hall. Remember they also, they pull the, yeah, the money Fleece goes the around. Guy. Fleece the guy. Yeah. Oh, hey, man, I'm sorry you lost, but we gave it a good old try. He's right. 20 million short. Okay. The JB might be 50, 60, 70 million short by the time it's finished with him. But What's it to him? He's got 3.4 billion whatever, in the network. But, yeah. And, yeah. and I got to think the Democratic Party knows that. Right now, they love the fact that he's in the race because that's money they don't have to spend okay. to defend the House or to win the governorship. And that's been the, the theory all along that they wanted JB to run because he's a billionaire. Okay. Well, do, but, do, but do they think Kennedy is a better, a more, will be a better, a more effective candidate in the fall? I don't know. I mean, I told you earlier, I thought Kennedy could run better than JB downstate. Right. Uh, and pick up that ex little but extra. Now, now you're not sure with JB cultivating that, building this infrastructure, it might actually work for him. It could if he wins the primary. It well, that's absolutely what I'm talking about. will win but the primary the, for JB if he win. wins. But it, okay, but he may win the primary, even though you say Chris Kennedy's going to do well downstate because these are older people who remember the Kennedy name. JB's money and organization in the primary may offset that. You know, it's been known sometimes, Charles, that money and organization and message, mo mom as I call it, M for money, O for organization, M for message, that just may do it for JB. Well, JB's doing all of this advertising right now to get his name out there, yeah. I mean, because he's got to. And Kennedy every, doesn't have to do that. Well, but again, in the polling, maybe that's why JB's doing so, doubling his poll, because he is. JB's at like 34%. Last poll, Chris Kennedy at 15. Chris needs to do much more to get that name out there. You can say he's got the Kennedy name. And if I had a bet right now, I'd go with the chalk. With I'd who? Go with the chalk, man. JB's got, got the money. He's got the organization. He's got the message. You know, the, you know, the, you know. I certainly am not one to say, you know, who would win. As far as I'm, as far as black folks are concerned, right now. Um, I think that you're going to be surprised at how many black people vote for T.O. Harder. Really? Yes. He's a perennial To candidate. let these he people know that what's going on in this state for black people is not 
happening. See, I don't so think if we so. have the highest black unemployment rate in the country, you know that more black people, it's harder for a black man to get a job in Illinois yeah. than it is to get a job in Mississippi. Yeah, no, Jeff, I, you know that? If they, if they voted substance, you might have so, a point. I mean, They're not going to vote substance. Why do you say that? Because the blacks generally don't. Well, that's because, what did you just say, general, the blacks what? They generally the don't. The blacks what? They don't vote substance. Well, see, brother, that's what I'm telling you. You're going to change is a this? New You're change day, this? A new paradigm yeah. is on the rise in black America. Keep in mind that we just ended the Obama presidency, yeah. right? We are on the verge of, a, of the cusp of a new era in black history. It's my you opinion. Know, who, who won in 2016? Who, who won? Yeah, Obama churned out the Democratic vote in 2008. He did it in 2012 when he was on the ballot. I in thought you were the interviewer, and I am the interviewee. Okay, you tell me. Okay, I'm telling you. Who won in 2016? In 2016, Donald Trump won yeah. the, the Electoral College. That's my point. Hillary Clinton won the popular vote. And in Illinois, Hillary Clinton won by 16 points. My point is that Barack Obama's election as president ended an era in black American history. That era began after the Second World War. Jackie Robinson became the first black person in Major League Baseball. There were first black this, first black that on through the 60s and 70s and 80s, and we yeah. were so proud. Yeah. And Barack Obama became the first black president of the United States, took office in 2009, left office in 2017, and guess what? Economic conditions, social conditions for black people went down during that period of time. Absolutely. Now what happened? Well, a lot of black folks never complained during Obama's years because we wanted to protect the first black president of the United States. And I made no, I, I did it. I did it. You protected Barack. I, I didn't go after Barack, go in on Barack. Of course yeah. not. But that day is over. We don't care about being the first this or the first that. What offends a black person now is not a cartoon, like they're trying to make this issue of this Illinois Policy Institute. It, it worked. It what worked. offends us now, the lack of jobs, the contracts. That's where we're going now. We're not worrying about being overprotective or having a black this or a black that, first black this. We're talking about economic development and getting something in return for our loyalty. What's in it for the black people, as my partner says all the time. Okay, folks. That's what we're doing. We got about a minute left, so I want you, you just heard Charles Thomas tell you that blacks are gonna rise up, they're gonna <laughs> overthrow Jeff, the no, overthrow. Don't, don't, no, don't I get to talk. Me. I get to talk now. And you get 20, 10 seconds to reply. 10 seconds. 10 seconds. They're going to, those the Light Ford and those Christian Mitchell, all these overseers on the plantation, they're going to be knocking them off, these black folks, and they're going to put their guys in. You believe that? I got a bridge to tell you in Brooklyn, my friend. You know, and you can say that. Let's watch. That, at the end that's of, your, we'll that's have you your, back. That's your opinion. We'll have you back. But at the end of the election. You know, I'm saying that there's going to be a different, a new paradigm set in this election. I'm not saying the Democrats can't win this election, but listen to me. We're running the out Democrats of time. can we're, win, we're, we're but they the got to come correct. Okay. And you've heard that from Charles Thomas. You can see him every morning, 6 to 9, WVON, 1690. You can find them, just Google him, you'll find them all over. On iHeartRadio. iHeartRadio. But the main thing is you remember to come back next week and every week to Public Affairs, and you'll see guests like Charles Thomas. <laughs> not Berkowitz, he's nothing. Charles Thomas, WVON. Ha, ha, ha.